This is the tough stuff, guys. I've been through this before on my old John Deere. One and a half inches to the center of that. So I might have to take a quarter of an inch off that. One and a half to the center of the pulley. Ooh. That's why he never used it. There's been a little bit of silliness going on here on a bend. But it does seem to float okay. Okay, I'm going to show you some damage here that this we might have to get on, get onto. Right here, you see that's bent up. Was he getting frustrated with it? But it just sails along perfectly, right? But I want to put another quarter or eighth of an inch onto that shaft. I might never get it off again, though. Eh? Now it's rubbing. Okay. Now we take another measurement. Leave that on there, and we're going to put this back together again. That's the only way to tell. All you old guys like Wayne or something. Put it back together again before you weld it. Okay. So, if you see right there, the pulley is right up against the bearing. And look at the lineup of the idler pulley to the main pulley. It's just about perfect. I, eyeball is a very safe thing. So I'm going to stick you down there. Looking at that. Right, right there. And we're going to just exercise this. So take it off, weld it, and I'm going to take about, I'm going to grind about a sixteenth of an inch off the back of that pulley. Well, how they're close, eh? That's really good. It's better than I thought it was going to be. All right, my friends. There's half the snow blower that I'm working on. It was given to me. I've got the bushing that goes, or what do you want to call this? Collar goes on the back of the pulley onto there but we, uh, I, I checked really carefully let me just tilt this if I can if you look right there whoop, it's bent and cut off looks like somebody did some difficult stuff so I don't want to because it actually rotates pretty good. I want to take this rotating assembly out of here because if you really look now down in here, I'm sorry to be walking around. It was kind of a resolution I've had. Look at this. You see that slice right there in the, in, in the uh, auger arm right there? And this one has a bit too. And it's bent. So if this thing hits something hard. So I'm gonna just I'm gonna take it out. I'm gonna take these two bolts off. These two bolts off. And I'm gonna pull that rotating assembly out of there. I know I'm crazy, but I wanna repair it because it's it's just hanging on by a thread. Half inch socket. See if we can get this off. Good. This one's not going to come. It's been cut off. And it's a bigger size. <laughs> Somebody's been in here deadlin'. Okay, there it is. Take the slack off the whole thing. I'll show you what I'm doing over here first. Same thing. 
Same thing on this side. We want to push it in a bit first. There we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I couldn't get the uh, woodruff key out of the shaft down there. So now, oh, the bearing is key. So that's what helped me get it apart. Right there. So now this could be a knuckle buster. I got to be careful. Good. Look at the length of that thing. Right there. I was trying to take it out. It wouldn't come, right? Because it wouldn't come. Flashlight. What have we got happening in here? Ah, Papa Son. That one can stay, and this one is coming up. So it's already been rigged, eh? There we go. So he didn't even have a carriage bolt. Even though it's a, this one's a 3 8 thread, and the other one's a 5 16 but now I can do what I wanted to get to do here. So let's just let's turn it this way on the on the lift. It was just this whole piece was bent, eh? and it's still. What can I use? I can use this a tapered chisel. better. Yeah, it's starting to wallow out. How's the bearing look? For the fact that it's been, oh it hasn't been drilled. See, that's what the carriage bolts are for. Okay, I can flatten that out. Bearing feels good. So now I've got to get underneath there and flatten that out somehow. I wonder if I can use my anvil. It won't fit in there. I wanted to improve the quality of the metal in here on this interface. Right here, it's almost improved already. Over on this side, you can see where it got bent. I can turn this upside down on the anvil and flatten it that way. Ooh, that's kind of scary though. did there. Sorry if you're watching my friend. I mean he gave me the snowblower out of the goodness of his heart, right? Okay, so now we are going to do the miraculous with nothing but our baculus. This should be worth the price of admission. Let's do it sideways so you guys can see. Yeah, when you get something for free that means the guy doesn't want it anymore. <laughs> and he's a fairly mechanical guy. Got to a point that he couldn't do it anymore. Anyway, let's see if we can do this. Things I try, right? Yes. Right on. Look at that. I want to flatten that out. I think you get an idea what I'm trying to do. There we go, buddy. It's a muscle. I wish I could show you the whole thing all at once, but you guys know what I'm up to now. Wait. 
So we hit something bad, right? We're getting there. Maybe you can even get have a look at me. Let's try the, the big shot here. Good. It's actually turned back to a square hole. Can you believe that, eh? That's about as good as you can get. <laughs> if I lay a 5 16 bolt in there, I might have to weld it in. Now we got to get it back on the, on the lift. Kind of fun in a sad way, man. Okay, let's get you back down. Get down! Gravity is such a big help sometimes. Good. Okay, this is what I'm going to try and do. The threads on this guy are in pretty bad shape. Although, hello, Mrs. Pender. I'll be right back. All right, you see this 5 16 carriage bolt? I made a line across here so that I know when it interfaces with the bearing flange that it won't, I'll get it right because these don't spin down here. So I've got that one in, I've got it lined up horizontally. And I'm just gonna snug it up and it's gonna suck into the hole, believe it or not. <coughs> We'll see if it stays there. Not quite, eh? Hey? It's close. Let's see if our flange will fit on there. Not quite. <laughs> but we have technology now. I'm going to just rotate this a sixteenth of a turn. That's close. Okay, that's exact. Now that should this should fit on here. Pretty good. It's still wonky, eh? It'll probably pop the bolt out. That's fine. That'll work. Let's get that bolt back in there. And we'll tighten it up again. <laughs> Nothing simple, guys, when you're dealing with repairs. But I, I just couldn't leave that old 
that old um, bolt that we took out of there, I could not leave that in there. So this, is gonna, this is where it was in there. He just chopped it off and stuck it in and hoped like heck it would thread right there. So now that should at least thread, right? Now we got a problem, a mild problem. Do I use this bolt that's been stretched? Okay, I'm going to bend that flange a little tiny bit. That'll work. It's going to work just fine. I'd like to bend that again. Although I seem to be doing the same thing over and over again, right? That's the definition of insanity. Okay, this is where it's nice to have spares and tools and stuff like that. So, I don't think, I think that's going to work with a lock washer, of course. And then, this one's going to have a lock washer too, for a different reason. I need a nut on there, a 5 16 nut. That looks like a good one. You've been around this kind of stuff a long time, you even recognize what's good and what isn't, eh? Okay, let's put this bearing cap on here. Now before I wreck anything, I'm going to put it on a, on a ratchet. I think that's got it. So that's one problem. Now we got to do some welding. Take this off. Uh, take this off. I don't even know how I'm going to accomplish the next uh, task. Whoops! Okay, you guys, pay attention now. If this was the old days, you can't talk to your kids like this anymore. But when I was a kid, take that look off your face, or I'll smack it off. You can't do that anymore. The kids can do it to their parents. Okay, we got problems. Weight don't uh, run. These kind of troubles are lots of fun. Uh, six and you move twice. Something, 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 something. Okay, we got problems. We, we got problems here, guys. How on earth am I gonna fix that that bolt has rotated so far it's cut the it's cut the sleeve that one's not too bad I can bang that one back with a hammer and just touch it with a welder so once again pardon me once again the owner never used shear bolts eh transmission or gearbox seems pretty good. Okay, that would be about right. Let's try and get that one off. That looks like a 7 16. That's why I've gone back to my long driver here. Eh? I'm just gonna make sure you guys are all happy watching. Maybe we should go to the other side where you can watch and I can work on the opposite side of the opposite side. Okay, let's get this guy off of here. Good. Okay. Do you think I can get that off of there? Smaller punch. Man, I've used my punches today, huh? Smaller punch, smaller punch. We're going to take this right off of here. Good. Bearing comes off with the sleeve. Good. These are very much like the same problems I had with my big, uh, with my big 832, eh? 
At least it had some grease in it. <laughs> I don't know, man. Can you believe that that thing survived? Now let's do the other side too. I might need a, 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 a wrench on the other side. Nope. I'll be darned. Eh? These aren't going back on, so. Ah, it's uh, it's been bent. Okay, gotta get funky with it. Right here. Tear's not that, there we go. The tear's not that bad. I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna hammer that down. Good, it's gonna come off. Good. Okay. So this one's not gonna be that hard to fix. That side's fine. And this side's wonky. But I might just get an extra extra sized piece of pipe. Because it's only held on from there to there. Do you see that? And it's cut from there to there. Hmm. I gotta think about that now, but I'm glad it came apart. They don't come apart that often that, like that. Muffins for lunch. I gotta think about this, guys. All right, I need a piece of steel that is about one and a quarter inches on the diameter. So this guy is very, very close. So I'm going to just squeeze it in the vise and get it as close as I can and then potentially hammer the heck out of it. I'll show you what I'm up to in just a minute. This is pretty darn close actually. Hey, hey, Ralphie boy. I'll show you why. Come on over here. I want to repair this hole with this piece of steel. And just weld it in there, sort of, kind of, make it stronger. So we got, we just have to enhance our curve a little bit. So all we have to remember is that this is the same circumference as that shaft on the auger. So now I'm just tightening this up, if I can, without hurting myself. Really quite good actually. If you look, that's a weldable curve. Let's get I'm gonna get a felt pen and we'll get the we'll cut the best curve out of there. I only need a piece that goes not even halfway around, eh? Okay, so here we have our piece that's almost round enough. Right? I have to grind that down a bit. And we can still use our bolt. And there'll be, there'll be enough metal on the other side to have some strength once it's welded here and here. I know it's not perfect. You might as well watch. It's not rocket science. I don't have gloves on, but I got I got goggles on. Let's lift you up a bit. I've been shooting the camera a little low lately. Better. A little bit more on this side yet. Good. Much better. I don't even know how this happened, man. I don't think it's manufactured that way, that's for sure. Let's just be smart and put that in the vise. Is that going to fit? I don't think it will. Okay, so we put this in here like this, and the other one I'm going to just plug weld it. Use the stuff that's there is what I'm saying. The file is your friend. 
Road K. This is something he would do. Well, here I'm going to stick a small curved plate in here that I cut out. I squished it with a C-clamp. I ground the paint away from the edges of the weld, and now I'm going to weld it. Thanks, guys. I don't like welding inside the garage, but there's no choice today because it's so windy outside, and uh, anyway, we'll just carry on with this. Left-handed welder, so everything looks backwards to anybody who isn't left-handed. Perfect. Might be a little hot. So I'm just going to tack this in two places and you'll get a good look at it. I'm a little nervous. Oh, I'm going to move my ground right to the plant here. I'm going to start an inch or two, a half an inch away. That looks nice. Now I'm going to, uh, see, it needs to be, it arced out a little on me, eh? So now, take this off. Then we'll clamp it hard over here. Let's go this way. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, Ralphie boy. It's a very tricky spot, eh? I'm going to start up here. Okay, let's see where we're at. Yeah, we're still good. I don't, I'm not that happy with how that went though. As long as you guys are watching somehow, eh? Better. That should help. So let's run a pretty little bead right along the back there. Come on. Why do they call it stick welding? All that was was a correction weld. Now it probably won't stick into that pipe at all. <laughs> okay, what do we got here? Uh, this one goes through like that. Almost, you know. 